think I want to start with kind of confession. I'm Chris Wade, and I've never been to a food festival before. I'm also Chris Wade, and I've never bought a can of, is it Peck? But I'm staying with some friends in Newport tonight, and they said bring some local produce from the festival. So I'll, I'll, I'll buy a can on my way out of town. Um, normally, I get to talk about towns, and, and in my role as a, at the boss of Action for Market Towns, we deal with 400 towns, so, and kind of the way I think, I only get to talk about towns in a kind of national level, a government policy level, about what are the similarities between 400 towns across the country. Um, and I can say a little bit about that sort of stuff today, but it's actually quite nice to come along and, and talk at a different level. And actually, I was saying to somebody over lunch, I realized when I was speaking at a conference um, alongside somebody senior from Argos um, a few months ago, realizing, actually, I'm not really that interested what happens to Argos on the high street, to be honest. I realized when I wander around the towns, it's like I can see cafe, blank, blank, butchers, blank, blank, greengrocers. I realize that the only shops I really pay a lot of attention to in towns, most of the time, unless I'm going to buy some new shoes or something, are the food outlets in the town. So it's nice to be able to come and talk about that and not pretend that I'm interested in online retail at Argos. Um, but I'll give you just a few um, overviews of some of the things that we do at Action for Market Towns, and don't worry about the detail on this slide, it's just to say part of the menu that we offer is lots of analysis and lots of understanding about towns. And so this is a piece of work that we've done with all the towns in Cheshire, looking at their performance, and then we have some data on different types of towns to do with their social makeup. So that helps us understand towns, and I'll weave a little bit, just a little bit, um, of that into the presentation later on. Another thing we do, we have loads of policy understanding that we can share with you and interpret um, UK government, Welsh government, and increasingly Scottish government, who are all at different stages of policy reviews. Um, I put this slide up, it's what we call our localism ladder, to say that, um, I know you're a food audience, um, what goes on in towns isn't just about food, isn't just about markets, it's about a whole range of issues, education, housing, all sorts of things. Um, and this is one approach we have for taking um, communities through this kind of seemingly complicated process. Um, we also have generous helpings um, of good practice. We run a national awards scheme and we gather um, about 60 case studies of good practice from around the country every year. I just put this one up. This is um, the Scala Theatre in Prestatyn, North Wales, one of our winners from last year. Just simply to emphasise that what happens in town centres isn't all about shopping. It's about doing things within the towns, getting people into the towns. Um, I was in doing a bit of work actually with Miller looking at um, North Wales towns recently and so I, I, I popped into Prestatyn and um, visited the Scala Cinema, great little cinema, great little cafe in the cinema um, and as kind of somebody said when we gave them the awards, I could understand this, it gave a reason for some people who don't normally go to Prestatyn anymore to come into the town really and that's all sorts of things and if you get people into your towns you'll get them shopping enjoying themselves spending money anyway enough of that kind of broad level um because as well as th kind of thinking at that broad level actually one of the things kind of other quirks of the way i think is is about kind of tiny li little details um, and i'll kind of share one of those kind of little details perspectives that i have on and see if it resonates with any of you, or whether you think I'm mad, really. Um, <clears throat> a key performance indicator that I realize I have, I stay in quite a lot of bed and breakfasts overnight. Um, I realize, or one of my things, how to judge a good bed and breakfast is the sausage at breakfast. And it's not only the sausage, it's, it's the curve on the sausage. <laughs> in that, um, a straight sausage equates to a catering pack, and a curved sausage um, equates to something made locally. Um, and, and, and I think there's quite a lot in that, because if, if part of the service they're offering is bed and breakfast, if they can't be bothered to spend an extra few pence on the sausage, which is one of the key parts of their breakfast, it's kind of, well, what are they doing in their bedrooms? Um, that I need to know about, that this sausage indicates the way they kind of treat their customers. 
Um, I'd never come across anybody else who judges um, hotels and breakfast in that way, other than I went on a walking holiday with my brother, and we haven't been away on holiday for years, and he said um, at breakfast, do you know how I judge? <laughs> and yeah, sure enough, he, he's the second person that I've met that judges a hotel by the shape of the sausage. So, you'll see sausages are a bit of a theme um, through my talk, because one of the things is that they're, they're, there's a whole range of quality in sausages, but they're kind of a British staple. Um, and so some of the things we were talking about this morning about quality and price, what kind of sausages, to my mind, um, span some of that? They may not, to your mind, I don't know. So one of the things I did, knowing I was coming to talk about food, is I did a little online survey through um, the 400 members or so um, that we have in Action for Market Towns, and got some very good down-to-earth comments back over the summer about what's happening um, on the high street in small towns across the UK in terms of the food that they're offering. And I realised in talking about food that there are all sorts of issues and we, we, we flagged up some big issues. Um, obesity is on the rise, I heard on a radio programme uh, only yesterday that we're going to be, the National Health Service is going to be spending £2 billion a year on tackling obesity in 10 years' time. We also touched on the fact that the use of food banks has doubled. So, there are some really big issues out there, um, but you can see that the Chancellor's come up with a, a sound strategy um, to, to, to deal with some of those. So I'm not, I apologise, I'm not going to touch in a big way on those issues. Um, what I'm going to focus on is about using food in the high street and how it re reconnects with people. But whilst acknowledging those other big issues to do with food are out there and shouldn't be ignored. Um, for a moment, I'm not focusing on sausages. I'm focusing on quiches, which we had some lovely quiches at lunch. Um, our offices are based in the town centre of Market Town of Bury St Edmunds. It's a lovely town. Um, its food offering during the day is not that fantastic. I came from a much smaller town where much nicer sandwiches. Um, but one of the things I've noticed in, in the market is that there's been some new traders coming into the market. Over, um, over recent years. And one of them was a, a guy who started selling quiches. And to begin with, he started selling quiches that looked like he was cooking like a dozen or so in his oven and bringing them in. Um, and as time goes on, his kind of business has built up and he's added bread. And it's kind of now, to me, it's the stall that I look for on the market amongst all these established um, stalls. So I'm going to talk about... Um, sharing the information from that survey that I did. Um, I'm going to talk really from a perspective of um, people see um, the importance of local producers and independent producers as a way of capturing spend for the local economy. People, as we've heard, see a way of that connecting with the wider countryside. And some people see selling food within towns as kind of the raison d'etre, why our towns and why our markets began and I respect all those things and I think they're part of it but I also just for me see there are reason to linger in towns and food is a thing we all need it every day so it's a reason to go to your town more often um, and for small towns which is what I deal with it's a reason to go to your small town instead of traveling further afield um, to larger towns so I'm going to talk from that perspective whilst acknowledging there's a whole series of issues I did a lot of this through the medium of Twitter and social media, um, and it's amazing. It's a really good tool in picking up lots of information very quickly. I'm going to just share with you at breakneck speed one of the kind of more intriguing conversations I had on Twitter. Well, I didn't have a conversation. I just asked a question. I put two ladies that had come from the same town, St Albans in Hertfordshire. I just asked them the same question which the simple question was, how much do your sausages cost in St Albans? And this generated this dialogue, which you won't be able to pick up all of it all quickly, but kind of a whole raft of opinions about buying sausages and tomatoes in St Albans. And at the end, I got to find everything um, except for the price of an ordinary pork sausage. Lol. 
But this kind of interesting points within that is kind of this thing between um, is buying good food and different food a kind of elitist, expensive thing? Um, actually, one of these ladies who joined in this Twitter conversation um, is a kind of retail guru on, 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 on independent retail. And, and I'd posed to her a question before saying, um, you know, kind of how can you break down this barrier? How can you make food interesting so that my daughter, who knows all about good food and all of her generation, don't just go to Greg's at lunchtime. There's other places that they can go to. Um, and kind of from the kind of retail expert's point of view was, well, you go where the market is, and if the market is rich middle class people, then you'd be silly to set up a shop anywhere other than that. And I thought, oh, well, that kind of didn't really answer my question. Um, but you can kind of see, um, you, know, you can see some logic in that, following the customers, um, but it's not really taking food um, to a wider audience, is it? So some of the things that I found out, well, actually, this wasn't a scientific survey. It was self-selected. So I asked people to do an online survey of what was the food retail available in their town. Um, and so probably it tended to be the people that were proud of the food retail in their town that answered back. Um, the general overview I got from all these surveys coming in was probably slightly skewed, but was positive that towns were, many towns were thriving, not just surviving. Um, and the, the town that came top of my little poll, got 10 out of 10, was the town of Weatherby um, in Yorkshire, just outside Leeds, just off the A1. Um, it got 10 out of 10 because it had the whole raft of food outlets in the town. It had a market, it had a farmer's market. And importantly, from my point of view, though it had a new supermarket, that Morrison's store is in the town centre, so people can go to Morrison's, get their tins, toilet rolls, or whatever, and they can still do the, um, do the local shops. Um, interestingly, then you kind of delve into, in, into Google, and there's iSpy TV, which has online profiles for all these shops. So I feel that I've walked into all the shops in Weatherby, met the shopkeepers, um, without ever having been in the town. And it wasn't the only town. Um, towns like Totnes, Barnstable, uh, Moulton, Oldborough, all towns that came up with kind of 9 out of 10 at least, um, kind of really booming. Um, I was a little bit surprised that um, Abergavenny was very mid-table at best, really. Um, and, but that was echoed by the point um, from Kim this morning about the difference between it being a food festival town with lovely eateries all around it and being a food town and having a food bank new in Abergavenny. So kind of like, oh, that... You know, kind of that surprised me and, and be interested in your, your views on that. Um, this is my thermometer for high street health. It's the only other chart I'm going to show you. Um, and it showed actually that most of the towns have a good range of the butcher, the baker, the local cheesemaker in the form of the delicatessen cafes, pubs selling local beer, not just any old pub, farmer's market. Um, the things that were most variable... Um, were fishmongers, um, and to my surprise, greengrocers, and then traditional markets. And I'll say a little bit more about those in terms of um, kind of hooking on into those in terms of in terms of a theatre, uh, a thermometer, in terms of an instant key performance indicator that I'll be looking for when I go into towns now. Um, this is former greengrocers in the small Suffolk town of Saxmundham that no longer has a greengrocer's. The quote above is from my own local fishmonger who was closing down and I said to him why are you closing down and that was his answer Chris all my, all my customers are dying um, and what he meant was all his customers are quite old he said nobody likes to buy fish with its head on anymore um, they kind of want it in blocks and things and so um, you know that's an interesting thing maybe not surprising because there are fewer fishmongers but I was really shocked and I, I hadn't really um, registered with me that greengrocers are a dying breed within our towns, really, and good quality greengrocers that offer you more than kind of plastic bags of peppers that you can buy in the supermarkets anyway um, are even rarer. Um, the kind of elitist thing. Um, also what I found was, again, not surprisingly, and recognising the guidance from this retail, retail guru, 
is that if you used our classification of kind of wealthy towns, um, the towns with the best food offer are the towns with um, a wealthier, older population and a higher proportion of second homes. Um, this is um, a picture from um, Oldborough in Suffolk. Polly will know it well. Fantastic range of local fish that you can buy, um, you know, that's come out of the sea. I wonder if that would be there if there wasn't the wealth of visitors coming to the town as well to keep those businesses going. Um, and so we have this thing where you've got kind of relatively poor agricultural communities with low paid workers. Um, they may be working in the agricultural industry, they'll certainly be surrounded by farmers' fields, they could be just wheat fields, um, and yet in their town centre you can't buy um, local produce and it's kind of, you know, it's kind of an odd thing really that you, you go to the countryside, you expect to be kind of eating the, 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 the fruits of the soil and, uh, and, and you can't. Um, this slide is taken from the small town of Market Raisin in Lincolnshire which is a, a rich agricultural region. Um, Market Raisin um, has the dubious um, honour of being one of the Porter's pilots um, but it seems to have, unlike some of them that have been kind of been torn apart and had film crews roaming around them, it kind of just seems to have got on. Um, so it's brought the market back into town, and you can now buy fruit and veg on the market. Um, and I got a tweet yesterday from them um, saying that they've, they're now opening one of the empty shops to have, um, well, a, 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 an all-week round kind of fruit and veg farmers' produce within there. So, it, you know, it's great to see that's just the sort of town that actually we need to be learning from and doing what little ordinary towns like, learning what little ordinary towns like that are doing. Um, that's what piloting um, something's all about. In our work, we, one of our most kind of popular queries is about We've got, an out of we've got a supermarket opening in our town. What can you do um, to fight it, help us fight it? Well, when you look into the supermarket issue, it's kind of more complicated. This survey, I, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if this survey comes up with a fantastic correlation that the struggling towns are all the ones that have got out of town supermarkets. Well, there wasn't enough data, but there wasn't a trend like that. You couldn't really see what the cause and effect was. Um, and and it's kind of getting our heads around that whole sort of mixed feelings and emotions about um, supermarkets. Kind of my normal reaction to supermarkets is if you're going to have a supermarket, have it in your town centre and then other traders can, um, can work with it. The slide I put up with is the, the town of Bigger um, in South Lanarkshire, um, which had the, it has a population of only 2,000 people. Um, but has the whole range of independent retailers selling food on its high street. Um, interestingly, a, a modest sized co-op store has just opened in the town centre. And it will be very interesting to see what the impact of having a supermarket in that town will be. Uh, will it mean that people, the residents of Bigger, don't have to travel to a neighbouring town to get their tins and toilet rolls? Um, and more of them will shop locally. Or will it take customers um, so you can see where I'm coming from. Will it make it bigger or better? <laughs> Which leads me on to, does size matter in terms of, and you see I haven't used sausages as my analogy here. Does size matter in terms of the offer within our towns? And, and actually, there is a, I did find a trend there. I found that very small towns, particularly rurally isolated towns, had a good food offering. And then you kind of got a, a bit bigger into the kind of 5,000, and, and particularly if they were near other towns, the food offering dipped away. And then I found a very good food offering in towns of a population of about seven to 14,000. I don't know what the population of Abergavenny is. But um, something about the fact that those towns are very accessible. If you need to pop in and get some food, you can pop in and get some food. Um, they're what you call selling lots of convenience goods. Um, and so quite a, a healthy um, array of foods in that kind of those middle two scales. Once you got bigger and you're selling 
um, a whole range of, you know, clothing outlets, um, electrical outlets. Actually, um, you go into a town like Chester. I went into a town like Chester and said, where can I buy some fish? Can't buy fish anywhere, you know, in a, sound, a town of that size. Um, so there's a kind of um, tailing off. Although I did find in towns like St Albans and Macclesfield, which are quite large towns, but have a lot of people living in and around the centre, the food offer was still quite good. So those are kind of just some of the trends I picked up from this unscientific survey about what's going on across towns and in our high streets. I then kind of refined my little test into something that um, I'm going to apply whenever I go into a town, and, um, and, I, and you'd be very welcome to give me feedback, what I call the brunch test. Um, so I looked at two particular items, and in this case I thought, well, beginning of September, can I buy locally produced sausages and can I buy locally produced um, tomatoes in my town? Can I nip in on a lunchtime, gather them up, come home and cook them and eat them within an hour? Is it an easy thing? Um, and I've shared that with people, and people around the country have been kind enough to share how much their tomatoes cost and how, much how easy it is to get the sausages. And it's kind of, you know, quite an interesting pattern. And please join in. Um, I went into my own town, which is a town of St Ives in Cambridgeshire, to do that, and I took my mobile phone camera. And it's funny, when you walk around a town with a camera and a notebook, from your own point of view, you see your town differently. You see it kind of slightly remotely. And I learned an awful lot dashing in into my own town um, with a camera and notepad, half an hour to get back and cook my meal. And I went in on market day. It was a lovely sunny market day last Friday. And I had to be honest, really, the, the market stall gave me nothing extra that Waitrose gave me in terms of all the kind of five Ps, the product, um, the price, the promotion, everything. You know, Waitrose kind of know their job quite well, really. Plus, Waitrose is next to a car park, and if you go in and spend a tenner, they refund you. So, you know, they kind of worked out the psychology of how to hook me. Um, and you've got to be quite kind of bold to stride out into the market past all that they're offering. Um, the only thing that those market traders, and in the town where I live, the only time you can buy fresh meat or fresh vegetables um, other than in the supermarket is on a Monday, a Friday during the day up until four o'clock or one a month at a farmer's market. So you've kind of got to be quite disciplined if you're going to shop locally within that town. Um, the only thing they had going for them over and above the supermarkets was that they could engage with me and interact with me, um, tell me a tale, um, amuse me, tell me about their products. Um, and so they kind of got to work that. And not all of them did do that. Um, some of them did that better than others. And I was very interested in the point this morning about, you know, that we enjoy the self-checkout experience or we're happier with the self-checkout experience more than that interaction. And I think there is something to be said that people kind of, particularly if they're not confident about the food that they're buying, um, even something like going into a butcher's that doesn't have the clear pricing. But now that I go into a town, I always drag my kids into an independent coffee shop, which they say, can't we have Costa, Dad? Um, and then a butcher's, and you go, and go into butcher's, and, and when you're buying stuff in a butcher's with poor pricing, if you're buying many items, you're kind of wondering, well, I've only got 15 quid in my pocket. I'm not sure, you know, I've kind of got enough. So there are little things, but those are enough of a barrier to stop a lot of people um, shopping in places that you think are kind of quite ordinary. So, that kind of brings me full circle. <laughs> kind of, I leave you, um, you don't have to apply the, the B&B sausage test, but I'd be very interested um, in any feedback on the brunch test. Should your brunch test, should you choose to adapt your brunch test so it's about kedgeri and freshly baked croissants. Um, that will say a lot about your town. It'll also say something about yourselves. Um, but just go into your town, have a look at it at different eyes. I'll be going to towns all, in, all around the country and I'll be coming back with uh, tomatoes and sausages. Thank you. Chris, thanks very much.